How many of you believe there's intelligent life on a different planet? How many of you believe that Ichi ever visited our solar system? And how many of you believe that the pyramids were built by aliens and that your office mate is actually a space lizard in disguise? <laughs> My name is Beatrice Villaruel, and I'm a very curious person. I love exploring the topics I say I should never touch. I'm also an astronomer with a PhD. In the last five years, I've been wondering, can I stop vanish? Is there alien life out there, and how can we search for it? We've all seen movies about E.T. In Starship Troopers, giant bugs come to the Earth and attack the humans. It's a splatter movie. I always enjoyed Alien with Sigourney Weaver, where the smart woman who nobody listens to ends up the only survivor, just remember to beware of the cat. When it comes to movies representing the actual searches for E.T., I believe contact is the most profound, where Dr. Ellie Arroway searches for E.T. in the radio bands. She searches and she searches, and finally, she makes contact. This movie represents the first generation searches for extraterrestrial intelligence. Many astronomers believe that we'll find alien life by looking for signs of intelligence in the radio bands. Since 60 years, astronomers use the world's largest radio telescopes. Since seven years, they have conducted the most impressive effort ever in the radio. Look at the size of these majestic telescopes. They have surveyed thousands of stars and galaxies. No, they have surveyed as many as 300,000 objects. But nothing, nothing has been found. Dr. Ellie Attaway is still waiting for her signal. Then there are the biosignature scientists. These guys and girls are much more modest. Why should we be looking for an intelligent civilization capable of writing books and music when it is much more likely that our planet has primitive life? The biosignature scientists, they want to find primitive life on a distant planet, a simple bacteria or an amoeba. And once the little miserable organism jumps on the planet's surface and blows out some gases, my astronomer colleagues expect to find a bump or a signature in the spectrum. I don't mean a planet in our solar system. I mean a planet that looks like the Earth but orbits another star. That is where they expect to see something in the spectrum. But we don't have one image of an Earth-sized planet around another star, not even a dot. Now, if I tell you I want to look for E.T. visiting our backyard, you will directly think that I want to look for flying saucers. Flying saucers, like in Mars Attack, Independence Day, or X-Files, where they land in front of the White House. In all movies, all UFOs always land in America. <laughs> many of my... <laughs> <laughs> many of my astronomer colleagues, they don't really like UFOs, and they just reject the idea. And can you really blame them? We have today billions of mobile phones capable of doing any kind of picture, and there's still not a single high-quality, believable image of a UFO. And after several Pentagon hearings last year, they presented us with more images of blurry dots. Astronomers were not impressed. But when it comes to getting the spectrum of an Earth-sized planet around another star, there is not even a blurry dot for an image. And now we want to look for alien life there? What if, what if we instead were to look for artifacts and objects that an advanced civilization has sent to our solar system? It only requires technology we already have, and it is possible to do these searches from the ground using technology of the cheapest kind. So why should we even try to look for this life? About 20% of every star similar to our sun has a planet similar in size to the Earth, orbiting the star within the habitable zone where liquid water can exist. There are 40 billion 
Earth-sized planets just inside our own Milky Way galaxy. Scientists have found 80 different types of amino acids on asteroids. They have found even the basic building blocks for the DNA molecules. With the basic building blocks of life being everywhere, there are all reasons to believe that our galaxy is full of life. Now we humans can send a spaceship on interstellar travel, and we can send exploratory spacecraft, so-called probes. The probe can carry a message. It can carry cameras, communication systems, lasers, everything needed to communicate back to its creator. Voyager 1 was a NASA space probe launched in 1977. It carried a golden record and indecent pictures of humans. It's a surprise that the Voyager mission has not been cancelled so far. It has already flown by Jupiter's Saturn. In fact, it entered interstellar space in 2012. At its current speed, it could reach the distance of the closest star, Alpha Centauri, in 77,000 years. But in the future, we might be smaller and faster probes, traveling maybe at a fraction of the speed of light. For example, Breakthrough Starshot aims to reach Alpha Centauri, our closest star, in 20 years. Now, if we can send a probe to another system, also can an advanced civilization send a probe to our solar system. Our galaxy might be full of billions of probes on adventure. So now, one part of the story is to send a probe. Another part of the story is to detect one. But we can do that too. We detect probes every day. We call them satellites. We can also see space garbage. There are one million pieces of space garbage in orbit around the Earth, and they are easy to see. When the sunlight hits the surface of a satellite or a piece of space debris, sometimes a short flash of light can be seen as the object rotates. Even small artificial objects can be tracked by a telescope on the Earth, either by astronomers or the military. This gives us a direct method to search for ET probes. We just need to look for fast flashes of light. For example, we can use photographic plate images from 70 years ago. These images were taken when the sky was entirely devoid of any human objects and garbage. And in these images, we can search for fast flashes of light. Flashes of light following a straight line. Such short flashes are similar to those produced by an artificial objects when it's reflecting sunlight. This makes searches for ET probes so easy because we know humans have nothing up there and we already have all the data. I got the idea when my team made an unusual discovery. We saw nine flashes of light that appeared and vanished in a small patch of the sky within half an hour. We did not know what it could be. There were two possible explanations. One, is that we see false stars on the plates created by nuclear fallout from unreported secret nuclear bomb tests in the early 1950s in the United States. But I'm no conspiracy theorist. The second option is that we see fast flashes from lasers or something reflecting the sunlight outside the Earth. It could be ET space probes, or it could be uh, spaceships, or it could even be just small artificial objects that have been orbiting for millions of years. Now, my team, the Vasco team, wants to search for fast flashes from alien probes, and we want to use both old images as well as survey the sky with an entirely new instrumentation that we have designed. We don't need one billion dollar missions or telescopes. We don't need to create difficult, challenging projects with thousands of people. And we certainly do not need for Pentagon to release any of their secret reports. They can keep the classified data. All we need is to look up the sky and search for things that flash. We can do it today. We can do it tomorrow or in the coming years. Dr. Ellie Arroway is still waiting for her signal. But what if she just has been searching for the wrong thing? Instead of looking for radio signals of primitive life, let us finally ask 
Did ET send a probe or visit our solar system? Many of you know astronomer Carl Sagan. Sagan estimated that the Earth might have been visited 10,000 times by ET traveling close to the speed of light. There is no more time to neglect the question. Let us stop pushing away the uncomfortable. We all need to look at the sky. We all need to search the sky for glinting on human objects. And only through science, through verifiable, reproducible and transparent studies, we can get a definite answer. And only through curiosity, we can all finally move forward. Next time you're told that curiosity killed the cat, Remember, any cat has nine lives. <laughs> Thank you.